welcome back to my channel and for this week we're gonna do a wrap up of my weekathon books i actually finished more than i expected to finish because i was supposed to read just four books and now i finished like six books and i was supposed to finish another book but i didn't make it in time because i was finishing other books instead and right now for weekathon i am going to run down the books that i have finished and by the way he's here again and we are welcoming back our special guest for reviews. So I'm just gonna run down first. We have Para Que B by Ricky Lee. It's still in its plastic cover just so I can maintain its quality. Patron Saints of Nothing by Randy Rebay. Orosa Nakpil Malate by Louis Margang Cuanco. The Mango Bride by Makivi Sullivan Blanco and Project 17 by Eliza Victoria. Of course, last but not the least, uh, The Wolf of Oranyaro by K.S. Velioso. I will start talking about the first, the last two books that I finished for a weekathon, and that's Project 17 and The Wolf of Oranyaro. So first off, we'll start with Project 17 by Eliza Victoria. This is a really, really thin book. This is written in English. So this is about Lillian who works for Caleb and Paul. They are two brothers. She takes care of Caleb since she acts like a caretaker or caregiver. And then she's actually wondering if what they say about Caleb is true because they say that he has um, schizophrenic disorder. But based on the amount of medications that Paul, his brother, is making Lillian give Caleb, she is in doubt about Caleb's condition, especially with the amount of drugs that he is being given. And some of those drugs are drugs that Lillian is not even familiar with. So she began this sleuthing about the background stories of Paul and Caleb and she finds this intricate web of deceit and lies that involves the family's past, the two brothers' past, and a pharmaceutical company. So this is more of a sci-fi novel because when you start reading it, you're actually introduced to a future world where sentries, robot sentries, are now the guards of places and the police and sentries and other robots are being created to replace human labor because they are more efficient so apparently this family has some connection with the company handling these sentries and other pharmaceutical drugs and Lillian starts to unravel more secrets and mysteries as we go on I'm not going to spoil anything because I don't like giving spoilers but overall, I did like the book. It had that thrill, especially in the middle to the end. What? Especially in the middle to the end. But what I found lacking in it was it seemed so short and it didn't have much time to create a world on its own. I still feel that there is room for more details of the world around and that wasn't really established much. The world wasn't really established that much. You had to figure it out along the way. But even when you end the book, it still didn't feel enough. But I I know I have an idea of the world already as I went through the book. And I like the book. I like the story. I think that's the only thing that was lacking for me. And maybe this book is somehow an introduction to other books that Eliza Victoria is going to release soon in relation to this world. But I did like it and I hope that there are more actually. I hope that this is just like a book one and I hope that this does turn into a series and so on. I actually give this book like 4 out of 5. I just feel like there was something that the book could have said more. With the last book that I finished, I, so I finished this book August 30 last night, and this is The Wolf of Orin Yaro by K.S. Valioso. The Wolf of Orin Yaro is written in English. It is a book one, and then it actually has a book two already, which is the Ikasar Falk. The Wolf of Orin Yaro speaks of Queen Talian, and she's the queen of Jin Saiyang. I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right but anyway so Jin Saiyang she rules Jin Saiyang which has clans that include the Oranyaro tribe and the Ikasor. It Ikasar. 
clan. Am I even pronouncing these things right? But Queen Talion hails from the Aranyaro clan and her husband Raya comes from the Ikasar clan and they were married by an arranged marriage in order to create peace among their land and after one incident um, Raya actually walks away and Queen Talion is left as the queen and she rules alone because Raya is somewhere in hiding and after all these years, five years later, she has ruled alone. There is still there's still unrest in her empire and she receives a letter from Raya that talks about him wanting to meet up with her after all these years and so she leaves her kingdom for a while just for a secret meeting she leaves her son and they do meet they try to talk things out for how they can work out a plan in order to finally reunite and create peace among Jin Saiyang and an assassination an attempted assassination occurs and, and so many things happen along the way so many revelations and then she starts finding out a, a lot about other things. Basically, we're introduced to dragons and mages. It's literally just an introduce because there really wasn't any more appearances for the dragons as well as mages. It was really just like pack. We're just putting that here first. We're introducing that to you. I love the characters in this book. I love Kain. I love Talian. And there are some that I'm just like, hmm. I already have nothing to say about Agos. I feel like he's just like that clingy guy who hasn't gotten over you type of feeling over Talion. But Talion still tries to seem as a friend. I do, I do love Kain. Like, you know, I was shipping for Kain. I was shipping for Kain and Talion while I was reading this book. Like, they kind of belong together. And when I actually reached the ending, a part of me thought, like, probably. Kain will have a special or an important place or part in Talian's story in the next few books. I feel like somehow he's going to end up as part of Talian's council. I feel like he should be. Like, that's what I think. I mean, I love Kain. I love his story. I love his background story. I love Talian's fierceness that, you know, amidst all the odds, she's still fighting as a queen, as against all the males that actually feel like she doesn't deserve to be queen because females shouldn't be queens that's how people actually see us and i feel like this book has a lot to say about a woman being able to rule besides what society actually thinks of us you know i know a lot of people hate raya and a part of me kind of did hate him but the part of me is also trying to understand where he's coming from like the reason why I love this book so much is because it was it wrote Talian, Ryo, Kind as real human beings, three dimensional characters where you know their thoughts, their feelings, and you know their background stories even though you don't. It just feels like you can earn so much from them. They feel so real. They feel like actual people that are not just written and they're not just a stereotypical type of characters that we see. And I think that's why I love the character of of Kain and Draya, aside from Talian. I love those three characters, to be honest. I know a lot of people hate Raya. But I feel like there's just so much more to be said, especially with, with Kain and Draya. Like, we aren't even focusing on them. But I feel like, I feel like if you unearth things, you would actually see a lot of reasons why they have become the people that they are especially like in the like for Raya for example I do believe that Raya was really um, overwhelmed by his jealousy his insecurity his feelings of course we see Talian talking about him as someone who is very intellectual but you actually see a contrast with how Raya acts that he's not really thinking right he's actually overthinking things because of his emotion so I think that's a huge contrast that the author was able to portray and I feel like those insecurities have actually been coming from somewhere and I feel like that will be dealt with in the second book in the Ikasara Falcon and I feel like um, there's a lot more action in the second book especially with the ending that we're left with. I, I feel like Raya was written to be like the damsel in distress. He's the damsel in distress not 
Italian and this time the female saves the man. Somehow like that. But overall, I really love this book. I really, really, really enjoyed it. And it actually got me thinking to reading more fantasy books again because I used to read fantasy and then I stopped. I went with like dark, serious books. I went into YA, wasn't really happy with the YA books that time when I was reading YA and now I'm back to reading fantasy more and more. And I think my genre, my mood changes a lot over the past few years, even the past few weeks. Like, not really into fantasy right now so I'll read something like Colleen Hoover and whatever. I'm actually gonna do a Colleen Hoover soon. I'm gonna do another video on Colleen Hoover, just not now because I just want to finish my week as on books. But I did read Slam recently and I have another review for that soon. So overall, I also give The Wolf of Aranyaro a 5 over 5. Yay! I'm really really happy with the books that I have read. Like, I'll just run this down. So The Wolf of Aranyaro, if you're into fantasy, please do read that. If you're into sci-fi, you should read Project 17. It's really short though. But I guarantee you'll enjoy it. Maybe what you won't enjoy long is how short it is. If you're really just into the drama, then you should read The Mango Ride. This is really dramatic, like teleserie drama, right, baby? Now, if you want, like, if you want something in relation to science and to the LGBTQI community, QIA community, you should read this to turn you into an emotional wreck after. If you actually want to see some, a book that delves into human rights politics, then you should read The Patron Saints of Nothing by Randy Rebuy. And lastly, if you do want a book that talks about love and romance and heartbreaks and even has a hint of magic in it, you should read Para KB by Ricky Lee. I actually have one more book I haven't read that I was supposed to read for a week -a I got this from Aklaten along with Project 17 but I didn't have time to finish it. So this is The Kobayashi Maru of Love by Carlo E. Javier. And now I have moved on to my other books. I am I just read Slam by Colleen Hoover. Basically, that's it. Thank you guys for watching and I'm going to finish my Colleen Hoover books this September and some other fantasy books because I'm planning on doing a sci-fi read sometime. I guess when I have the time soon, after I finish my Colleen Hoover set, I'm gonna do those. Let me know as well if you guys have any suggestions for other Colleen Hoover books I so far have. Hopeless slammed maybe not that's in novella and there's one more. november 9 yeah november 9 so thank you guys for watching i'll see you soon and please do subscribe to my channel and like this video if you do like it again i have i will put the titles down below and the readings that i did give them and yeah hope you guys could read them soon please add me on social media down below and subscribe to this channel and don't forget to like this video if you did like it see you guys